All right, well, I am fixing to do something that's probably going to cost uh, way too much money and take way too much time for what it is, but that's kind of this entire channel. Um, I'm going to build a deer feeder from scratch, sort of, ignore that. Um, I was going to build one from an entire hodgepodge of just mismatched parts just to see if I could, but I did all the pricing out and um, not, not even considering my labor and time. Um, it was gonna, like, I was gonna save like five bucks buying all the parts over just buying like a drop-in feeder head. Uh, so I, you know, was debating whether or not I should even try this project. And then I called my friend who works for a property that does QDMA and they have a thousand deer feeders and they do prescribed fire. So I was like, hey, do you have a, a feeder that like caught fire or something? He's like, I'm your guy. So he got me that. It's a directional feeder. It's a Moultrie. I'm hoping it's a 12 volt. Um, I haven't dug into it yet, but it is just a plum full of crap and it's probably totally junk, but I'm hoping at the very least I can save the motor because uh, that's really all I need out of there. I'd love to be able to save the timer system too. Um, I think that's the most expensive thing is, is a timer after I parted everything out. Uh, but anywho, uh, my advice is um, if you're thinking about doing this, just buy the feeder kit. Um, you know, creating the hopper and the stand and all that, that's easy peasy. That's going to be part of this project too. The solar panel, you can probably just buy a solar panel. Um, you can probably find a scrap one somewhere or something and repurpose it. You know, get something, um, a much larger one that's like reached the end of its lifespan and you know, it'll just be way too big for the application, but it'll still put out plenty of voltage because this thing is going to be running off of double A's. Uh, so yeah, you don't need crazy amounts of amps. Uh, but anywho, uh, I digress. Let me get into all the parts. All right, so before we get into that guy, because that's potentially a can of worms, um, this is a solar panel that I built. I think this might be the first video I have on the channel. It may still be on my old channel. I don't remember, um, but it's linked somewhere in one of the playlists somewhere on here. But I built this, I think, when I was like 18 or 19 or something. And I've got the other one over here. This is the big one. Um, this is the other one. I think all together they put out, uh, I think, combined they were like 60 70 watts brand new um and this was like a pack of like defunct solar cells i still have the rest of them actually somewhere stashed in there i think they're in here maybe oh there they are right back in there but anywho it's defunct solar cells um that you know they got chipped or something and they weren't quite putting out the correct voltage they didn't pass qc so they're just selling them ebay it was like pack 100 for like seven bucks 10 years ago so it was a great deal because i just took all this stuff soldered on some silver strips then just rtv'd them to the back of a window pane and then just sprayed the back with polyurethane and on this one i've got a metal sheet on the back which I probably shouldn't it's painted though but probably should have like not metal on there but man i searched for years and i could not find a giant piece of plastic that would fit the back of this thing um so i just gave up uh, probably should have just stolen a political sign but i digress um, anywho, it works. I haven't tested it in 10 years, but it works as far as I'm aware. Um, and I've got a whole mount system for that and everything too, that I can hinge it, angle it, point it directly at the sun where I want it to. And this jobber right here is a solar controller that charges a deep cycle, uh, 12 volt AGM battery, which I don't have anymore cause it died. Um, and I have a big old boat battery, which I, I don't think fits in the bucket, but we're not going to be running that. We're going to be running uh, rechargeable double A's. Because uh, you can stack eight of those together and get 12 volts. Um, but, anywho, I already have this made. And I already have the solar controller. And I was able to get this. So I figured, well, shit. I bet I can take a five-gallon bucket, drill a hole in the bottom, stuff a funnel, like yonder, down in the bottom. Or get a big hot piece of, like, iron and drop it in there and deform and bend the bucket into a, you know, a hopper funnel shape. And then throw a cover on top of it. Drop that into like a tri-stand 2x4 setup that I've already got all planned out. And then just like put a big bungee cord around it, keep it in place, keep raccoons from running off with it. And uh, just either huck a pre-made, you know, feeder head. Like if I can get this to work, I'm just going to leave it as is. We're not going to monkey with it. And it's already plumbed for solar, so I can just um, go cut up an old laptop charger and just get a 12-volt plug, plug it in there and just, you know, wire it right onto these guys right here. And call it a day. Is that about broke off? Anyway... We'll stop looking at that and yeah that's my thoughts um if i didn't ha already have most of this work already done i wouldn't even be entertaining this uh, and, and don't don't do that yourself unless you're just looking for a project um you can buy a deer feeder for 90 bucks uh, you can just buy a head uh like name brand for 40 bucks you get some really cheap knockoff stuff for like 30. um i was really tempted to just buy one of those uh but i couldn't figure out whether any of them would actually work with solar the Moultries were the only ones I could confirm 
um, would work with solar. And most of the ones that are just plug-in kits are six volt, and I only have 12 volt panels. And the timer I would be able to get if I had if I you know had to retrofit stuff only runs off a of 12 volt. And I couldn't figure out a way that I could draw 12 volt out of the solar panel. Um, and then plumb six volt into there and still get the full amperage without having to like get in here and cut circuits and all that sort of stuff. Um, I know there's a way to do it probably, but I'm not a good enough electromagician to figure that out yet. So I figured there was too much mental effort waste on that. So I just called a friend and he had a busted one of these. So we'll pull it apart and see what we can save. Um, so as long as I can get the timer or the motor out of this and it's still good to go, um, that should be all I need. Um, I can make a battery holder if I need to, but anywho, I digress. Uh, let's get into gutting that thing and seeing what we actually have. Alrighty, well this appears to be the 12 volt lit acid battery variety. And somebody has been in here monkeying because those screws don't match. And, uh, there's cut wires. And those wires aren't connected to anything. And, uh, that screw's not even in. So, um... That looks like someone has done a resolder job to that too, um, and I don't know why there's just these little resistor guys poking out the top of this. That's kind of confusing. So um, I may have my work cut out for me. All right. So after further research, this is a six volt system, which complicates things because, um, well, a I can't use regular twelve volt batteries, like said car battery, and I don't have anything currently on hand at the moment that I can use to test this thing. So I'm gonna have to rig up a jig to hold. Four AA batteries rather than eight, but the plus size is, is I can stack more AA's and get more amperage because I'm sure this thing takes a fair bit of amps. Um, additionally, my solar panel is 12 volt, which means I'm going to have to disassemble it, and come down in here and break that line in there, then run a separate line from either side and then tie them in over here. Uh, I need to rewire it anyway because of this and because I need to... There's plenty of political signs out there on the side of the road now, so I can go grab one of those to... Um, get a proper plastic backing in there that's insulated but anywho makes my life a little bit more complicated um but uh there's no no plus side but anywho um getting in here i'm a little worried uh because whoever the hell was in here before had absolutely no idea what they were doing um it looks like they snapped all the nubbins off on here and then they just ran like deck screws through here and they also didn't realize that you could just take these two little Phillips heads out and then take this thing off the side of this so they were trying to run deck screws diagonally down into here I don't understand and they also ripped um, these connectors out of the um, the DC uh, barrel jack when they could have just unscrewed it and sluiced it out of there and uh, these wires right here they're actually they're for a um, like a garage door clicker a, um, just a transmitter so that you can remotely activate the feeder so I don't need to worry about those um, but yeah interesting I'm also a little concerned about how small the gauge of this wire is um, but I guess I guess my panel is only putting out like I think like two amps so I mean that's fine for that but anyway I digress um, I don't see anything burnt on here yet um, however there's just like a ceramic disc capacitor wired across these two sides and I don't know whether or not that's supposed to be there or not. I guess it's something to do with how this thing flips like polarity or something, but I feel like um, that's probably not supposed to be there. I don't know. I've never seen that on a motor before, but I'm also not an electromagician, so I don't know. I'll look into that, but uh, I'm liable not to uh, replace that. So um, I guess I'm going to have to find some PVC pipe or something or wire roll up some paper bags and tape them or something to make some kind of insulated holder for batteries but uh, I'm gonna try and hook six volts up to this see what the hell happens okie dokie well it appears that the controller works so that's a cool sign um, additionally it appears that the motor works as well let me hold up let me hook the alligator clips and up like I was saying oh come on I don't really got the amps but there it is. Motor works too. So the issue, I believe, was the fact uh, that this thing was assembled like ass and uh, that uh, I literally just pulled both those contacts off because the lead had like corroded and uh, had not actually bonded to the uh, top of the motor. So I think that was probably most of the issue. So 
Uh, I'm going to try and do spade connectors, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to do because of all this crap in here. And I really don't know what this guy is about, this capacitor. Um, I'm assuming um, that's their, uh, I, I guess, for some kind of drag or, or electromagnetic feedback or some kind of, you know, kickstart thing or something. I don't know. Uh. But I'm not going to worry about it. So, yeah, I'm going to run this thing off double ace. And uh, I think I'm going to hook this guy up to that guy with that guy and see if I can get that to run that real quick so I know that all that in there is good to go. Okie dokie. So I just set this thing to the correct time, more or less, and I have it set to go off at 335 for 20 seconds and I've got the voltmeter hooked up. So when that guy clicks, I should see, I think that had six volts on it and that's supposed to be a 12 volt battery, so it's very dead. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of amps. It doesn't have enough to spin over the motor, um, but it does have enough to run this guy, which really takes no power. Even just touching that to the 9 volt uh, for like 5 seconds is enough to power up the capacitors, and it stays on for like 30 seconds. Um, it does not draw a lot of power, uh, but anywho, hopefully here in a minute or so, um, this should kick on and we should see voltage, which means that that guy is working just fine, and that would be... Nice, because then I don't have to screw with all that, which means that that guy's fine, as far as I can tell, unless it just needs a crazy amount of amps, it's working just fine, and uh, I should hopefully be able to just wire up some double A's, whole stack of them, and uh, be able to give that enough juice to spin that guy over. So, should probably, hopefully, do something here in the next, like, 15 seconds. Hey, there we go. So, that guy is working just fine. Um, now the only thing to do is try that one more time, except hooked up to the 9 volt, and hopefully this guy can pump enough juice through it to uh, be able to uh, spin that guy over. All right, moment of truth here in the next couple of seconds. Got it set up to uh, run power for about four seconds at 3:38. So next 30 seconds or so. Hey, -o! and she's done. There we are. So all this works. I think it was just a matter of a uh, you know. Bad soldering. Really do not know what this capacitor was about. Um, we'll ignore it. But that's a good sign. Now we just have to hope that I can power this thing off of a crap ton of rechargeable double A's and then keep it charged with the solar panel. Okie dokie. There that is all back together and hopefully fixed. Um, let me just get in here and show you what I did. So... I heat shrinked uh, spade connectors onto the motor so that I can disconnect that and pull the motor if I ever need to. However, I can't get into the motor because uh, there's a set screw. Hold on, let me spin this guy. There's a set screw down in here that holds this uh, plastic agitator onto the uh, motor shaft. And I can't get the plastic bit off and I don't want to break it. So I'm not going to, you know, torque on it or yank on it too hard. I also may, you know, rip the innards out of the motor. Also, I lost the set screw, so I had to put a longer set screw in there, but don't worry about that. Anywho, I also came back down in here and re-soldered the connections back onto the uh, the DC barrel jack. Um, burnt off like the copper uh, solder on the uh, circuit board for the negative lead, so I had to just wire it hot onto the um, the tab for the jack. It doesn't make a difference as far as, you know, the circuit goes. It's probably actually a better connection uh, doing it that way. But uh, it's just wired on there. I probably need to do the same for the positive um, because I think I'm going to be pumping a little bit more amps through this than it's intended to have. Um, probably not, but mm, we'll see. Uh, that may be a problem or not. Also, I replaced all of these screws, and by that I mean I actually added the missing screws. And I made these short screws because uh, they were poking up um, through into this housing down in here, which was causing stuff to get jammed and probably why the thing broke. On top of the fact that, you know, none of these the soldered connections here on the motor had just disintegrated and melted. Um, but anywho, we'll ignore that. Uh, and yeah, just taped up those wires in there for the receiver and tucked them out of the way and just routed everything correctly now. So, my plan is to hook this bad boy up to 9 volts again. Make sure everything works and test it. And I also really want to check to make sure that this thing is supposed to take 6 and not 12 volts. Um, because it seems to really like 9 volts. I don't know. We'll have to test it with the, the double A's, and if it runs off of 6 volts on the double A's, we know it's good, and if it doesn't, then we know it actually needs a little bit more oomph. So we'll see. I don't know. I'll do more research. I cannot find what the model is on this. Assumedly, there's only one of these, um, one model of this in existence. So mm, we'll, we'll just go with whatever I find. 
But uh, yeah, I'm going to power this all back up, set it back up, and uh, make sure it is still functioning now that it is um, uh, fixed. Okie dokie. Well, I've got all that set up again, and I've got it set to go off at 5.03. And I also have the voltmeter uh, run in parallel uh, with this, and I'm measuring amp draw in, you know, at max 10 amp. I'm expecting this thing to probably pull somewhere around 5 amps at startup. And continuous, maybe somewhere around half an amp, something like that. This seems to be the same kind of El Cheapy 6 volt motor that everybody else uh, sells on eBay. So I don't think this is going to be anything crazy. But yeah, we're just going to watch this puppy and see whether it blows up or not. Um, hopefully, it doesn't. Okay. Looks like it only pulls about one and a half amps at startup, maybe two, and then it pulls 0.7 continuously. Um, it probably wants to pull more, um, but that's probably all this battery can give it. Uh, it'll probably definitely pull more under load for sure when it's stuffed full of corn. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I've got this set up to go again at 504, so it should go off here again in a second, and we'll see what the peak draw is again. Uh Okay, anyway, uh, that all appears to be working just fine, so uh, we just need to uh, hook up some double A's and into a big old stack and uh, hook them up to this thing and see if we can get power to run. And then i got to figure out some way to stick them in here. Um, this little slot down in here looks to be just the right size that if I get two, like, four double A stacks, I can probably, you know, stack those on top of each other, wire them in um, series with each other and then tape them together, jam them in there, and hook these leads to them, and that should be enough. Um, I can seem to have plenty of space in there. That's about a three inch by about four inch, and I probably have a good two inch stack in there, so neat. Anywho, I think we might be in business. All right, well, before I get too far ahead of myself, I also want to test my solar panel uh, to make sure it's actually putting out what I think it is. So right now it's five o'clock in September, daylight savings time so that's really four o'clock um, in the afternoon we're not at peak solar efficiency but we're still pretty damn hot uh, here in sunny Charleston so that's 2.45 amps and if we cut her off and flip her over to DC volts you can see how much voltage we're pumping out of this bad boy which appears to be oh hey seven volts so I think we're good to go. I think I can just plumb this guy right in. I just have to, uh, well, I need to um, solder on some actual proper wires in here and then clamp them on so I'm not putting strain on these little tabby guys and uh, wire on a, a 12 volt barrel jack. And I think we are good to just plug this straight in. Hot damn. Well, that saves me a heck of a load of time. Okie dokie. So I had one of these sets of uh, butt connectors and I just snipped that, soldered that onto either side of this. Um, slathered that in potting compound and then heat shrink soldered these two guys together onto a piece of trailer wire and now I'm going to take it outside and test it to make sure it still works after I've already slathered it with potting compound and won't be able to clean it off and fix it because I completely forgot to do that before I did that but anyway we'll, we won't pay attention to that and we're going to go test it right now to make sure that it still works all right that's all plumbed up and we're still pumping out voltage so good we didn't break it thank the lord Okie dokie, I've taken the next step and drunk more beer, but more precisely, I have created my hopper uh, and the mounting device for that doohickey. So this was a bucket of, I think, sweet condensed milk. And um, I have just cut out the flange, or kind of bottom support guy down in there, which is just about three inches. And I've placed this guy down on there, created these, or marked out the center, and then disregarded that and then cut these brackets out of some other bracket that I had lying around drilled a hole halfway up and then there was pre-drilled hole over here that I just drilled probably could have moved that back and uh, these are just some metric bolts that I've got lying around and I need to get rid of so I just made little doohickey jobbers to fit these tabs down here so you can just plop this guy down in here it's not the most ideal system but it's a lot easier than trying to fabricate a whole lock ring. Hold on, give me a second. Technical difficulties. There we are. 
like that and then just give her a twist and then this whole thing just kind of twists up on itself if you try and undo it like that and then it all stays in place and just like that bada bing bada boom we have a hopper for the deer feeder and i can fill this up with corn and a five gallon bucket holds 25 pounds of corn which is not a lot of corn for a deer feeder but um i don't want to spend a lot of corn on these dang old deer so anywho works for my needs if you really want to get fancy you just take another five gallon bucket and you just cut the bottom off and then you stick it up or i guess you could just kind of tape it together and cut the bottom off put some shims in it and you know holds 50 pounds then but i'm not going to do that um additionally you can just use a 55 gallon drum which is what most people do but i'm not most people uh, as evidenced by the fact that i'm cobbling together my own deer feeder instead of just buying one but anywho i digress now all i need to do is find a um barrel connector that i can plug in there because i don't have any broken power cables at the moment but i'm sure i can find some uh, or just go to the dump and just go dig around while the the dump lady's not looking and steal them out of the electronics bin and uh have that so i can wire that guy onto the solar panel and then test it out and make sure that this works and while i'm already in this process i might as well mark out and start building my stand which it's going to be a tri-leg system pretty much what i'm going to do is make basically a, a triangle out of two by fours oriented like that and then underneath that i'm going to alternate triangles like that and that'll create a shelf or that'll create a guard and a shelf that i can drop the bucket in between and down onto and then i can have a strap that goes up through the bucket handle to hold it in place and just wraps around the base of it doesn't need to be fancy just needs to keep the the raccoons out and i'll throw a lid on top of it keep the water out the corn but and then on top of that uh, triangle frame i'm going to basically bolt legs in at about 30 degree angle all the way around and then put braces like that and uh yeah that should be enough to hold 25 pounds of deer feed um, doesn't have to be super fancy. Um, probably could have been made uh, something a lot lighter and better if it was made of steel, but I can't weld, so uh, this is what I'm doing. Okie dokie, now we're moving on to cutting wood, but more importantly, I restocked the beer. So now we have the proper motivation to do this. So I did a bunch of trigonometry today and it was all fucked up and wrong. So this is what we're actually going with. Um, this is sort of the basic layout i'm going for and all of this will be trimmed flush of course but i'm just mocking it up right now to confirm uh, my calculations that were horribly off so we are going for this kind of pattern on the inside except you know those will be cut at, at 30 degree angles and whatnot so this bucket is about 10 and a half inches wide across the bottom so this bottom section uh, we're going to have an internal gap of 11.5 inches. In this upper one, we're going to have an internal gap of 18.5 inches. And that'll all work out nicely to create this cradle that'll have a perfectly sized, I think, 9 inch gap. Mm, nine and a half, close enough. So, this will cradle this bucket nicely. And that do doohickey jobber will be able to just slurp right on in there. And um, these little mounts will be able to sit in here in this gap. And I should hopefully be enough removed that, yeah, that this guy will clear. And it's not going to hit the bottom of the, the um, wood frame. And this will all be toe drill or toe screwed into each other the whole way around and that'll give us our cradle and then we're going to add legs to that and i gotta work out the exact height i want but i think i'm going to cut all the legs to four foot um maybe four and a half foot and that should put the bucket at about eh, level right there shooting feet out which i think is a good level because then the top of the bucket will be about here which is you know about as high as i want uh the bucket to be when i'm coming in here with another five gallon bucket and trying to dump this thing in there and trying to pull that lid off of the thing and all that stuff so um i think that'll work okie dokie there that is and uh i can actually spin the bucket a full 360 mostly so that's good so i can aim the directional feeder however i want once i get the stand properly set up and it's it's snug as a bug so that's a good thing. It means I'm going to have less strain on my bungee cord. And uh, I'm going to try and put legs on this thing now. And hopefully I get them mostly kind of straight. And just like that, there's that dude guy jobber built. 
So the feeder actually clears almost perfectly. It's like I almost planned it that way. Good thing I didn't. I can rotate this however much I want in there to aim that wherever I want. Because it's a tri-leg system, I don't have to worry about keeping the thing balanced because it'll auto level itself because it's only got three legs. It's only got three points of contact. So um, doesn't matter what kind of terrain you set it on, it's always going to self-level, so you're never going to have a rocking effect. Um, not that that really matters with the deer feeder. And yeah, it's pretty solid, mostly on account of the fact that it's really heavy for what it is. Um, so I could honestly put a much bigger container up there on top, but I'd have to reevaluate this whole hopper setup. Um, at the very least, it'll keep me from putting too much, uh, <laughs> too much corn in there. So probably should run another screw in here just to be safe. Um, I don't know if I want to do the supports or not. I feel like that's a little overkill for what I'm doing. Um, I'll check the, tr the scrap lumber. I think this guy might actually work out. Don't know how long this is, but if it's long enough, I can make some supports out of it or something. I might have another scrap piece. But anywho, uh, that's pretty good. All I need to do now is figure out the power source. I've got all the batteries. I just need to make a holder or go find some kids toys I can steal and rip apart to get battery holders out of. And uh, I need to go find something to cannibalize for a barrel jack. So uh, let me get to that. Okie dokie, Hurricane Ian starting to tickle our taint outside here right now. So I am going to work on a battery holder for this thing because I'm not going into work today and I ain't going into work tomorrow and I have a weekend and I have the day off after that so I don't know what the hell I'm going to do in my life. Uh, probably shoot a deer. But anywho, um, I'm going to attempt to build a battery holder out of pop rivets and some uh, copper flashing and some old springs I've got and hot glue and uh, all this other and this, these bits of like, um, what you call it, um, clapboard or maybe some flooring or this strip of plywood, something like that. And we're just going to see what the hell works and hopefully I can get something cobbled together. Well, that probably took three and a half hours worth of effort, but I built one battery holder and uh, so far it seems to work. Yep. So that was way too much effort and uh, I'm just going to buy some now. Um, unless I find something between now and when this hurricane's over, um, that will work suitably. But, uh, oh boy, that was a pain in the ass, but I already kind of got one made up. The real pain was making this stuff. What I ended up doing was just took, uh, some pieces of siding, clapboard, whatever you want to call it, uh, cut a three and a half inch piece and then two other three and a half inch strips out at about three quarters of an inch. And then we just glued those to the side like that and jammed. These are half inch pieces. These are um, just about three quarter right there. So half inch would probably be ideal. But I drilled holes through them and then ran eighth inch by quarter inch pop rivets into that. And then I made bus bars out of this piece of copper roof flashing like so. And then I just put washers on top of um, crimp on eyelets over there and over here it's just two bus bars and then this was some sort of something kind of something clamp sort of similar to this but this is painted metal so I didn't use it and that was probably like a four inch piece or something like that and each one of those is about an inch worth of metal there's just an eighth inch hole drilled on one side bent at a 90 degree angle put the rivet on and then just folded it over with a pair of needle nose pliers like that and then I just adjusted it to fit and this is just in there as a shim to keep the batteries from wiggling around and I'll glue something else in there similar so now all we have to do is hook it up to that guy and see if it powers on if it doesn't then this is probably a 12 volt system and I was lied to uh, in which case um, I'll just run them in um, parallel rather than series and that is not turning on so I think this is in fact a 12 volt system in which case let's hook it up to a car battery and see what blows up well it likes the car battery so, that means my solar panel is not going to work, but I'm pretty sure that uh, that guy works, or at the very, well, I'm probably not going to be able to modify that one. Um, we'll see. Do I have all these? Well, all those guys are actually run 
in series so that panel should actually work because that should be a 12 volt panel because that's um that's double that hmm. well hopefully this will all work out okie dokie let's see how well this thing spins with a whole boat battery hooked up to it and hopefully it doesn't just instantly smoke the motor Ooh, boy she pulled some amps Yeah, she likes the amperage. Damn. Well, I may need a whole lot more double A's. Hey, it will actually uh, run off six volts. My doohickey just wasn't doohickeying right, so that's exciting. Um, let's see if we can actually set this guy. Well, in the meantime, this guy fits absolutely beautifully in there, so we're just going to tuck that into there and just see how long this will last. Well, you're not going to believe it. Uh, I'm over here working on the second battery pack, and that son of a bitch just spun up and then stopped. Huh. wonder why it didn't work before. Anyway, I'm going to go back to working on this. And just like that, we have our second setup, and hopefully when I take the clamps off, it doesn't explode, and we can wire this up in... Um, parallel with that guy and uh, hopefully that gives the, the motor a little bit more oomph behind it and if not then we'll wire it up in series and we'll have 12 volts. Well by some strange miracle that actually all fits in there. Huh. It's like I planned it or something. Well let's slap this sucker back together and uh, see if it works. Okie dokie. Well we have her set to go off at 634 or 35. I don't remember which. It'll tell me at some point. But uh, yeah. Um, we'll see if this bad boy fires up or not. What is your malfunction? Do I have you set to AM or something? Is that what it is? Oh, there she goes. Just had a bit of a delay on her. That sounds healthy. Well, she'll run off at six volts. Great, I don't have to fuck with the solar panels. Well, Hurricane ended up being a nothing burger. We got all those dead limbs up there. I was hoping it was gonna knock some of them down and not a single damn limb came down, even with hurricane force winds. I guess it's probably high tropical storm here. But anyway, this feller's still working. Um, I got it set up to go off in um, five minutes. So we'll see if that does anything. Um, but anywho, yeah, uh, I think at this point, um, I'm going to go rummage through the house and see if I can find a barrel connector uh, for the solar panel um, so I can actually plumb that guy up. Um, I really need to look at those solar wires in here because they're like some kind of like infinitesimally small gauge if you remember. Those, those guys right in there, those little tiny jobbers. Um, and I don't know if they're going to take the two amps that that thing puts out sustained um, all day. Uh, they may like just melt, um, so I might actually um, re-solder in some some higher gauge wires onto that barrel connector and uh, hope for the best. Um, yeah, don't know why they went with that. Uh, I guess they figured you'd never plug anything other than their tiny little baby um, solar panel into this thing. But uh, we're gonna give it the old factory smoke test and see what happens. I may need to actually solder in a whole new barrel connector. Um, yeah, we'll see. She's a spinning. It seems to need like at least a five minute lead time or something because it didn't spin up the last time and I reset it. Anywho, um, I researched uh, wire gauge and since I'm not expecting to see any higher than three amps out of that thing, um, it tells me that I'm good for con sustained three amp current pull, that I'm good to, to use 22, 25 foot of 22 gauge wire. And I'm pretty sure whatever's in there is like 24 gauge or something. So I'm not going to worry about it and we'll see if it bursts into flames or not. Um, so yeah. Uh, and that would only be if the batteries were stone cold dead and that thing was just pumping amps in there as, as fast as it could take it. Or if the motor was running entirely off of the solar panel because the batteries were stone cold dead. So I'm not going to worry about it. Well, I remembered I had this laptop that I just threw up on the shelf in the garage because I have no use for it. Um, and I have another one I'm about to throw in here as well. That's just a spare monitor I have. 
And uh, I realized it has a barrel jack. And of course, it's exactly one size too big. This is a 6.5, that's a 5.5, five, five. so. <sighs> but, anywho, I'm gonna try the other monitor next. I'm just gonna leave that detached for now to make my life easier. Also, I found that screw I lost. Okie dokie, so I went inside and I dug around and I found another monitor power cable for a different monitor that I don't need. Um, well, it's my backup spare extra diagnosis monitor. And this power supply for a um, um, hard drive reader. So, I think I'm going to snitch this one because it doesn't have this massive plastic coating on it. And just, uh, you know, snip that guy off and then splice her up into that guy. And hopefully, that should be the end of it. And I'll put some, um, I was going to put spade connectors on there, but uh, I don't know if they're waterproof. Um... We'll see. I'll put spade connectors on there and I'll wrap them with electrical tape so I can disconnect it and then put it back onto this when I want to. Um, but we'll see because I do use that thing. But I guess I could just use that power supply. But that's... Anyway, we'll look into it. But we have a barrel connector now. So I'm going to test to make sure that it fits through there. And if that's the case, we'll splice something on there and hope for the best. Okie dokie. Before I get too far ahead of myself, let's make sure this thing actually works before I start cutting up power cables. So I've got this 25 pounds of nasty weevily aflatoxin filled corn and I'm gonna dump about a gallon and a half of corn up in here and then I'm gonna try and catch it in the same bucket and then weigh it out and see how much this is thrown in a 10 second period so there we are corn and I see a corn down on there so just need to wait about a minute or two and just uh, shove this guy up in here and hope it catches it and uh, see exactly how much corn we're throwing in a short period of time. Maybe I can get this, I might be actually be able to throw that up under there. We'll see. And now we wait for corn. Hey, corn! And that's probably a pound. Maybe two, but it works. So success. All right, let's see what that did. So 28 ounces, you know, 28 ounces in 10 seconds. So that's 2.8 ounces a second, more or less. So give it a little, we'll round it up to 30. Um, in 10 seconds, we'll say three ounces a second because it had, it had that, that spin up period where it had to fill up the um, thrower. So we'll say 30 ounces in 10 seconds, three ounces a second. So, so anyway, uh, that's just about two pounds, a little bit less. So I think I'm going to want to do a pound uh, per go. So I guess five seconds is going to be the way to go. So, all right, good deal. Okie dokie. Well, that's all plumbed up and I got the barrel connector just hooked in with spade connector so that I can pull that off and put it back on that charger if I ever need it. Um, and if I accidentally screwed up the polarity, it's simple because I can just swap it around. And I already did that and already fixed it. So I have no idea if this is charging or not because it doesn't have any kind of like solar power indicator on that or anything. Uh, there's no switch or settings or anything to engage solar. So we'll just hope to hope it's charging the batteries. We'll see. Um, Anywho, now my next step is probably one, to test to make sure that this thing still works with that guy hooked up, and uh, two, I need to make a mount for that solar panel. Um, and what I'm, what would be ideal to do is just mount it right down there at the base. And I may actually be able to do that, but I have a feeling if I do that, the raccoons will get on there and rip it up. Uh, well, if I put it up there, they'll get on and rip it up anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but the lower I put it to the ground, the more humidity it's gonna see. The higher up I put it, the more wind it's gonna see. So I think, I just cut my losses and just put it down at the bottom, just make some shims so that I have like a nice 90 degree mounting surface um, or something like that, or maybe hang something off of those mounts, we'll see. And uh, just pick a side that looks good and then just mount it right about there on two pivots so that I can go like this and change the angle however I want. And uh, I think that'll be good to go. Also, um, I've got the rubber plug that seals up that guy in there i need to just get some tape and just rub it up all on top of there and uh, then just get a little tie to tie that guy onto there or i'll throw it actually I'll just throw it in the bottom of this thing it ain't going anywhere and yeah but do need to figure out a way to plug that so i will look into something for that so anyway um i'm gonna tip around with that stand real quick and uh then i think we'll test this thing and see if it actually works off of solar well ain't my best work but 
then again, nothing is my best work, so it's great. Um, need to swap these brackets out for something a little bit more stiff. These are just something I ha haphazardly slapped together and threw on there ages ago, and uh, they're not particularly stable. So need to reinforce those, and you just get some eighth inch steel and just bend it like that, or maybe 14 gauge, probably enough. But uh, yeah, um, that's together. Still need to make a little seal for that. But um, I think we're gonna go stick that over by the bird feeders and uh, dump five, 10 pounds of corn in it and just see if the thing runs. Um, be great to see. Uh, if I wake up in the morning, there's just a pile of corn out there because I already know deer go over there and clean out all the bird seed off the feeder logs every day. So might as well hug it over there because I don't want to attract them into my garden. Nothing a little gorilla tape can't fix. All right, well, there's the Franken feeder over here next to the bird feeders where the deer already come every night anyway to eat all my bird seed. So we're just going to dump, I don't know, eight, eight pounds of corn up in here, maybe, maybe 10. And uh, we'll see how long it lasts. I got it set to go off at 5 p.m. And it's 4 something and it's 6 a.m. Um, I have a feeling that it's not letting me run that first timer multiple times or something. Like it's got some kind of thing in there because like I bumped the thing up five minutes and I hear it click and then it doesn't run. So I set the other timer to 5 p.m. So we'll see what that does. Drink up. All righty. Now, just throw a lid on it and uh, wait about 10 minutes. All right, moment of truth here any second. Hey -o! That's a lot of corn. That yeah, worked, it worked perfectly. Yeah, I don't know, I think there's something weird with the timer. Like if I reprogram um, feed time number one, it seems to just like click the solenoid once and not actually do it. But if I set so or if I set feeder time two to go, it'll do that. And then if I change feeder time one back to a different time, it'll go. So I, th I think it's got some kind of internal check to see if it's run a certain time um, once within the last 24. I don't know if that's something for like a, a power loss um, cutoff or something. Ah, uh, it works. Throws corn. Um, man, is that really one pound of corn? Doesn't look like it. Alrighty, well, she's been running for nearly a week now, flawlessly, non-stop. Plenty of corn th being thrown out. Um, I've got trail camera set on, up on it just so I can watch the deer coming and going and seeing whether they're utilizing it. Uh, we got a doe with a fawn and two yearling spike bucks who have been hitting it. I'll throw up time-lapse footage of the deer camera um, feed right here. But anywho, deer feeder is working perfectly reliably, um, no issues at all. And uh, I found a nice new scent rub out by my deer stand. So I think it's time I, I moved this guy out to the deer stand. It's second week of October, so rut will be here in a month. So I want these bucks to get on, well, I want the does to get on a schedule of coming by the deer feeder. And I want the bucks to be on a schedule of following said does. So it's daylight savings time right now. So I'm gonna set this guy up for 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. And when we fall back, uh, that's gonna put me at 6 a.m and 5 p.m., um, if I'm remembering that correctly. So that'll be great. Uh, that'll tell this thing to go off about the time I'd be getting in the stand in the afternoon and about an hour or two before I'd be getting in the stand in the morning. I'm probably gonna be doing the morning because I want this thing to go off once I'm already in the stand because I want these deer to be trained that when this thing goes off, they can come over and eat the corn because it's only spitting out a, a pound. So they better hurry up or they ain't gonna get the corn. Um, that, at least that's my theory. Uh, I don't know anything about deer hunting. All I know is that I can hunt over bait here in South Carolina. So we're gonna do that because uh, my deer are tiny and starved and uh, my neighbors uh, do a lot more hunting than I do. So I just want one decent buck and then we're gonna work on the doe management uh, protocol for the next rest of my life um, because uh, these deer are skinny and they ain't growing big horns. Um, and yeah, uh, we've, we've got some old does that, that look like dogs. So uh, we, we need to thin the herd out a little bit. So anywho, uh, let's move this thing and uh, get on with my QDMA practice. Alrighty, well, she's been running flawlessly for about a month now. It's now the last day of October. Actually, day, but Halloween Eve. Um, and uh, she's been spitting out corn just fine, no issues. Um, however, I have run into, uh, well, a little bit of an issue. Um, didn't realize that I made the solar panel frame out of like MDF. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is the first time it's rained like all month. And uh, yeah, that guy's not gonna last like at all. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I'm just not going to do anything about it, and uh, we'll just tie a rope around it or something and uh, see how long it lasts. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. Um, so 
Anyway, I thought that was like fake stained wood, but nope. No, it's a it's straight up MDF. Um, that's a lot of water up there. Um, but yeah, another problem is uh, it's actually a mast year uh, for uh, live oaks, which is the dominant oak species out here and also white oak. So there's just scads of um, delicious, nutrient rich, carb packed, uh, white, oak, white oak acorns scattered all over the landscape. So the deer are not eating the corn. Um, I mean, it's, it's at the point where I have not seen a raccoon on this corn at all. I haven't seen a crow on this corn. I haven't seen a jay on this corn. I mean, it's mostly just the, the flocks of cowbirds coming through eating all the chips and occasionally the doves come out here and suck one down. Um, but the deer do come by, as you can see by all the tearing up. The moles are like burying it or something too, which is interesting. Yeah, so uh, my whole plan with using this as an attractant to get deer to come in front of my stand um, may not work all that well uh, because the deer just have plenty of food everywhere all the time. Um, it also means that they're probably not going to come out much during the day because they can just come out at night and just eat acorns. So um, I'm not expecting very good uh, deer success um, or hunt success. Uh, but we'll see. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll observe some does. I'll, I'll bag a doe of nothing else this year. I'm not quite out of old rotten corn yet. Um, still probably a third in there. Um, seems to be spitting out a little bit less, but it's not jammed. But we'll pull that off. We'll clean that. We'll drain the corn off. And uh, I'm going to try and find some old black paint somewhere just to paint this, uh, just so it doesn't stand out so much. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do about that MDF, but uh, I'm not going to mess with it right now. I'm just going to make something, some kind of, some kind of what you who's it something or another just to keep the panel from falling down and breaking. Um, or we won't. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, um, she's working flawlessly, electronically. No issues so far. Um, I just don't think it's going to be a good success for me. So let's, uh, let's put the last final touches on this thing and uh, throw her out in the field. And uh, Okie dokie, well, I found my uh, can of dark gray blackish paint. So we've painted everything except the solar panel, of course. And um, she's ready to go. Just gotta let her dry overnight. And um, we can huck this bad boy out in the field. Um, the reason I'm painting it is one, so that it gets nice and hot and toasty and stays dry. Two, to uh, preserve the wood. And three, so that it doesn't stand out. So obviously in the middle of the field, it'll just kind of blend in, I'll stick it in a shadow. And uh, painted the bucket as well, because might as well. It's easier than finding a black bucket. And um, that'll help it blend in all nice-like. And it uh, won't be so much as a, of an eyesore, and it won't stand out, and people won't know that I have a deer feeder out there. Not that anyone's going to steal this piece of shit. So, yeah, this guy's still running. It went off last night, and it went off like an hour ago. So, I guess I'll let this air dry, and then we'll... Uh, uh, I think I can hopefully get it dry enough that I can carry it back into the garage so it doesn't get dew on it. But uh, we'll let her dry and um, huck her all back together and move her on out. All right, well, the paint dried, so I got her loaded up in the truck. And uh, we're going to see if she makes the trip out to the deer stand. Yeah, all right, well, she picked up a little bit of Spanish moss, but uh, we're here. This is where she's going, right over here next to these uh, Chinese tallow trees. Because uh, this is the best clump of cover that we've got in the whole of this field, and the deer just hang out in there all the time so uh, I can rustle some up right now if I feel like it but I don't feel like it so I got other crap to do and deer stand is uh right over yonder so uh, I'll have a nice clear shot of of this with a nice good backstop because there's nothing that way for about a uh, mile and a half and I'm um, shooting down into the dirt into trees so that'll work out perfectly I was gonna stick it over there by that clump of trees but I realized I don't want to accidentally shoot one of the cows over there and uh, two, um, it's a little close to the road, and um, there's not really much deer activity over here, but the deer just move back and forth through this little gap right here, through this clump, this thicket, over here into that thicket, and there's a little wetland down in there, so there's actually good forage as well as occasionally water. So they move through here a lot. So I want to put the, the deer feeder here so that when the deer are moving through, they work it into their routine instead of coming out like right there and just shooting across to come over here and mill around for a bit and then take off. And I'm hoping that, you know, I have enough doe activity over here around said feeder um, that the bucks will work that into their routine for the rut. And um, that's how I'll be able to pick them up, uh, even in a mass year like this, because uh, we got tons of acorns. There's an oak tree. There's an oak tree. And, you know, the whole, the whole goddamn wall is oak trees. So, yeah, we're going to have acorns everywhere. But um, I'm going to get this sucker set up real quick and uh, load her up with corn. 
All right, she's all set up, filled full of corn, and I got saved some of the nasty corn that I'm just going to uh, dump out over here. And uh, I just adjusted her for daylight savings time, well, daylight spending time, on daylight savings time, whatever you want to call it, because that's actually two days from now. It's fourth, so on the, whatever it is, sixth, um, it's rolling back, so this worked out perfectly timing-wise, because I don't have to come back out here and fiddle with it. So I just rolled her back an hour, and she should actually go off here in about, I don't know, 60 seconds. So if we're lucky, she'll kick out some corn. And that'll actually give me a perfect opportunity to uh, check to see how it's actually throwing and adjust it accordingly, because I can fiddle with the legs, because I'm kind of, there's a, a mound right here from an armadillo slash foxhole uh, between the trees. So I can slope it up how I like um, and make sure that the corn is throwing correctly. Don't want it to be shooting uphill because it'll probably clog, but I also don't really want it shooting downhill because perfect timing. That's kind of pathetic. Um, but, eh, it's good enough to get the deer to come by. This is not supplemental feeding, by the way. Um, I am, this is just an attractant. This is just to get the deer to know that that sound means free corn and to come by here um, every evening and every morning when I would theoretically be over in yonder deer stand. Because I, I've got this calibrated to go off when I would be in the deer stand about an hour after I get in there. So I'm already settled and pissed out the side of the thing and finished my coffee. And then the deer hear that noise and they come walking out of here. And hopefully, theoretically, I'll have does come in here every single night. And then the bucks will realize does are here. And then they'll start coming through here every single night. And uh, they'll be here in the morning during, or during the middle of the day during peak rut. And maybe, just maybe, I can bag me a not... Um, terrible looking buck uh because that's all i want i just want like a like either like a like a, a full mature like at least three and a half year old six point or an eight point of any flavor i'll take it and i'm gonna be shooting does the rest of my life because it tastes the same and uh, i am not an antler chaser um i'm here for the meat but i just want one one set stick on my wall and be done with it but anywho, uh, if you like this kind of crap, consider giving the video a like, uh, comment, tell me, uh, tell me other improvements I could do to this thing to increase it. Um, wonder if I could hook this thing up to some kind of more juiced up battery and get this thing to huck corn, you know, 30 foot across the field. And uh, if you want to see more jerry rig fabric cobbled garbage like this, you got to subscribe. So smash the big red button. And until next time, time out.